Why is technical and vocational education and training, TVET, perceived poorly in many developing countries around the world? And how is this subsector of education viewed negatively in spite of its potential to contribute significantly to manpower development? These were some of the questions that motivated my doctoral dissertation. Hi, my name is Titi Olaele, and I conducted a genealogical inquiry into the inferior positioning of TVET in Nigeria. The research question was, how have policy formulation, program development, and practices around TVET contributed to its construction? The conceptual framework for this study was built by combining human capital theory, social theory, and post-colonial theory with Foucault's approach to history, genealogy. The idea was to disrupt the supposed continuous development of TVET in Nigeria through the analysis of descent and emergence. I also incorporated Carol Bachi's 2009, what's the problem represented to be approach. The WPR approach provides a set of six questions as a framework for investigating a variety of social issues. I examined the positioning of TVET within several historical and public policy documents to identify the discourses around TVET and their contributions to the negative perception. I considered the role of post-colonial discourse, class, privilege, and a few other factors on the development of TVET. The strategy I employed was to retell the story of TVET by highlighting and connecting previously marginal and obscured elements and events. The study revealed that Nigeria's adoption of the British elitist education system changed the country's educational trajectory from the vocational and functional nature of education in the old African society to the current system where TVET is perceived poorly. The introduction of Western education also created new economic opportunities and this led to a thirst for literacy education and a demand for higher education focused on Western epistemologies. The study also revealed that the politics of educational productivity dominates education policy and practice in Nigeria, and that the imperial principles of education policy development are still evident in Nigeria's current policy on education. Six recommendations emerged from this study. I conclude the study with discussions of the implications of the findings for policy, practice, theory development, and further research.